Hello, I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today we will be reviewing The Wish Song of Shannara by Terry Brooks. If you've been following my reviews, you know I've already reviewed The Sword of Shannara and The Elf Stones of Shannara. Now we're going to round out the uh, first Shannara trilogy um, by reviewing the third book in the trilogy, Wish Song of Shannara. All of these books are standalone novels, you know, I mean, you can read The Sword of Shannara, The Elf Stones of Shannara, Wish Song of Shannara, in whatever order you care, and they're all equally as entertaining. And I will uh, get into a little bit about that uh, now, uh, kind of my ranking of the three books. Uh, I would say Sword of Shannara is my favorite. I'd give Wish Song Shannara my second favorite. And then Elf Stones, probably my third favorite. All very solid books, though. All completely worth your time to read. Can I say that about all the other Shannara books that I've got here? I've got every Shannara book that's been published so far. You can see them around. I think the first three books are the standout novels in the series, and they are the first, and they're the three that I'm going to review. I may review uh, the four book series. The I think it was the Heritage of Shannara. It's right here. It's it's got the Scoins of Shannara, the Druid of Shannara, the Elf Queen of Shannara, etc. I might review those at some point. I probably will will not review anything after that. Maybe the first King of Shannara. We'll see, but we'll see. You know, we'll see how desperate I get for book reviews, you know, in 10 years. I might get to them. Might get to them. Anyway, let's talk about The Wish Song of Shannara, the third book in the original Shannara trilogy. You know, when uh, Terry Brooks first wrote this, it was the first ever book he wrote not on a typewriter. He wrote Sword of Shannara and Elfstones of Shannara on a typewriter. I mean, you can imagine how hard that must be. Well, for, for those of you who don't know what a typewriter is, just imagine like a steampunk version of a laptop computer and a printer combined, you know, with a lot of metal gears that go types out your thing, <laughs> prints it out at the same time. That's what a typewriter is for you young kids that never have ever heard the term before. It's kind of like a steampunk laptop for us old people. Terry Brooks wrote his first two novels on a typewriter, and I'm telling you, that's got to be tough, especially when you get to the editing part. I mean, just the word processors, you know, even Microsoft Word, for as much as people complain about it, makes writing novels so easy in comparison to if you had to type it out. And then every time you type something and you want to make a change, that screws with the entire manuscript. One word change will, you'll have to retype the entire manuscript. Oh, forget about it. I don't know how the guy did it. Wish Song of Shannara was the first book he ever wrote on a, reg on a regular computer with a regular word processor. And he says, oh my gosh, it was a miracle. It was like a miracle. I didn't, you know, I, Things work out a lot better when with technology, you know. Anyway, another another thing about this book. This was the first book, you know, that Terry Brooks wrote where he was not doing his day job. You know, he'd made enough money off of Sword of Shannara and Elf, Elf Stones of Shannara that he quit his day job. He was a lawyer. He was nervous about that, too, because he's like, I don't know if I'm ever going to sell another book in my life. Do I dare quit my day job? I'm a writer myself, and I still have my day job. And I, 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 so I know the feeling, you know, it's like, hey, the book is selling okay, but what if it's the only sales I ever get? What if a coronavirus or something comes along in the future and just kills book sales, you know? What if that happens? Oh, wait, we're in the middle of that right now. Yeah, I'm filming this video right in the middle of the coronavirus lockdown. Book sales are dead. Yeah, I'm going to keep my day job. So Terry Brooks was real brave, you know, he was a brave guy to quit his day job. But it worked out for him, you know, I mean, now he's... Now he's rolling in the rolling in the money with the Shannara series, Shannara series. You know, I, I say that wrong. I don't know how it's pronounced. Shannara, Shannara. I say Shannara. Some say Shana, Shannara. To each his own, right? Um, but he quit his day job to write this book. You know, fifteen. He spent fifteen years writing books. The first long while, not even being published. But then he worked his butt off to get published, with no 
And then there's no ever, when you're a writer, there's a little bit of writing advice. I always toss it into all of my reviews, a little bit of writing advice. When you are a beginning writer, I'm going to tell you, there's no promise by anyone that this is ever going to pay off for you, like it did for Terry Brooks or even me. You just got to slog through it for 15 years until it works out, until you get good enough and professional enough to compete with the likes of me and Terry Brooks and Brandon Sanderson and George Martin and J.R.R. Tolkien. That's your competition. Terry Brooks knew that. But he spent the time, he did it, and his dream worked out. Can for you too. You just got to be patient. You can't expect overnight success. Terry Brooks, 15 years of writing before he quit his day job. Me, I'm at 15 years of writing. I still have my day job. It just, it is what it is, folks. Writing advice, lesson over. Let's get to the review of the wish song of Shannara. It's a quest novel, just like Sword of Shannara, just like Elfstones of Shannara. Wish song of Shannara is a quest novel. It takes its, um, it takes everything from the Lord of the Rings that we love, just like his other novels, and it does it in a different way. And we love it because we've got people out on a quest trying to look for, find, and or destroy magic talismans. Great stuff, great stuff. You know, this trilogy was really the first fantasy trilogy to be published, you know, to any degree of success after Lord of the Rings. A lot of people think it's derivative of Lord of the Rings. Well, it is. But, you know, it the Shannara series really launched fantasy into the stratosphere. So we have a lot to be grateful for, Terry Brooks, for sort of copying the Lord of the Rings formula, bringing it again to the forefront and setting fantasy off into uh, what it is today, which is, you know, one of the more dominant uh, genres of publishing. Wish Song of Shannara, Quest. Let's talk about it. We've got our old friend Alanon who comes back. You know, the druid, he comes back. He goes back to Shady Vale. I love Shady Vale. The village. This is, you know, I grew up in a small town. This is why these books, these Shannara books mean so much to me, is I grew up in a small town, in a small southern Utah town, not many people, and I yearned for adventure, and so when I would read these Shannara books about kids in a small town that get swept up in a great adventure, I loved it. I loved it because I could, play, I, I mean, I related to that so well. This is the same, same formula as the first two books. Alanon shows up in Shady Vale, and he goes to the Olmsford kids and say, well, there's this evil magic that's going to destroy the land, and it's up to you guys to save everybody. And off on the adventure they go. Well, what's the adventure this time? Well, the adventure this time is there's a book called the Ildatch, which it's an evil book, and, it, and it's a record of the entire history of everything, mostly the evil stuff. And the evil guys want this. The Mord Wraiths, they want this. The uh, Skull Bearers, the, you know... The evil Lord Brona, they all want this so they can bring their demons back and blah, blah, blah. Bad guys take over the land and rule with their badness. With the Ildatch because they have all the knowledge. Well, Alanon goes to Shady Vale and he goes to the Olmsford kids. You know, this, these, now we're talking about the son and daughter of Will Olmsford, Will Olmsford and Eretria from Elfstones of Shannara. Now we're talking about Bryn and Jer, who are the uh, son and daughter of those two characters from the previous book. And Alanon comes and says, listen, you guys have inherited the magical powers from your parents. And, you know, we've got the Elf Stones and the Wish Song. And you guys have those powers. And we need to find this Ildatch book and destroy it before the evil people get it and take over the world and do bad things. That's the basic setup. And then we've got two different quests. I like this. The reason I like this book is because we've got two different quests. Because Jer and Roan Lay, Roan is the son or grandson of Menion Lay, and the, you know, you'll recognize those if you've got those characters if you've read the other two books. Bryn and Roan Lay go off with Alanon on the original quest to destroy the book, and they leave Jer at home. Well, these creepy bad guys are stalking Shady Vale, and there's one gnome that kid kidnaps Jer, and he takes him away. And uh, so now we've got two different quests going. We've got the kidnapped kid and the and his older sister, who's off with Alanon on a quest. Two quests combined. 
And great, I love both of the quests because, you know, with Roan Lay and Bryn and Alanon, we get to meet Colgyne and the Moorcat Whisper, and we get to see how the Sword of Lay is forged. Uh, a lot of stuff happened on their journey to the Ildatch. And the Ildatch is like in this really creepy jungle kind of forest that's kind of protecting it. That's all I'll get into before spoilers. I don't do spoilers. I'm just going to give you a basic plot rundown. The, uh, now, with um, Jer, on his, the younger son's, uh, the younger Olmsford son who got kidnapped, he ends up getting rescued by Garrett Jax, the weapon master, and then they end up collecting. Um, but then they go off and chasing, they, they want to, uh, they've got some information, they need to go find Alanon and Bryn and Roan, and so they go off on a quest chasing the original quest, and Jer sort of collects sort of like this ragtag group of adventurers that go along with him. You know, some of those are the uh, Gnome Slanter. We've got uh, Elb and, ja and uh, Garrett Jax, of course, and Aiden Elezadil, uh, one of the sons of one of the main characters from the Elfstones of Shannara. We've got Helt, the tracker. Um, we got a lot of different characters, kind of like a Magnificent Seven kind of group that go on the quest with Jer. Anyway, a lot of quests, a lot of adventuring. I mean, it's an adventure novel. It's a young person's adventure novel, just like Sword of Shannara, just like Elfstones of Shannara. It rounds out the trilogy very well. Good versus evil. Wonderful characters. I loved it. I love this book. Like I said, I rank the Sword of Shannara as the best one. Wish Song of Shannara is the second best one, and Elfstones of Shannara is the third best one. All of them fantastic novels. All of them great. I can't recommend them enough. Everybody should read them. They are the pinnacle of the Shannara series. I think if you read just the three, you'd be fine. You can get the rest like I have and, re and read those also. I, uh, I, I have a fondness in my heart for the Shannara series, so I collect them all when they come out. However, the original trilogy is the best part of the whole Shannara world. So, I give this a 9 out of 10. I, ex I expect you all to go out and buy it now. So let's do that. It's called The Wish Song of Shannara. Go get it.